Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Is it Monday? I think it's Monday. <laughs> Abby's wearing her bedhead. Morning, Joe. <laughs> nice to see the neighbors watching. <laughs> Abby's bedhead. Today we're going to talk about pancreatic testing. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Uh, it's almost Christmas scary. Yeah, no kidding. We haven't wrapped one single gift. I'm just excited we finally got a tree up on Saturday. <laughs> and it is... Sh oh, yeah. Uh, well, and then we have our special tree. That's actually my favorite one. <laughs> um so I want to talk about uh, pancreatic testing because, <laughs> yeah, love Abby's bedhead. Oh, my gosh. And I could comb that and literally five seconds later it would look just like that again. But today's a really good one. <laughs> so um, I was doing some phone consultations yesterday and I was talking to a client whose dog has some kidney problems going on but has also been suffering with bouts of pancreatitis. And so we've been talking about lab results um, over the past week or so. And there's something that shows up on the lab results that can be interpreted um, incorrectly. And I find that a lot of pets are diagnosed, diagnosed with pancreatitis when they actually don't have pancreatitis. And I think that's what happened in this dog's case. So the dog had some drooling and nausea and was taken into uh, the veterinary office and it might have been an emergency, but um, was taken in. And they knew the dog had a little bit of um, kidney dysfunction starting to occur. But when they went in with the dog not eating and being nauseous, all the lab work was run and all of the pancreatic tests were normal. So amylase, lipase, PSL, which is uh, pancreatic specific lipase. So everything was normal, yet they still diagnosed the dog with pancreatitis. Now, to me, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If you have absolutely all normal pancreatic enzymes, why are we labeling this as pancreatitis? The good news is it's all going to be, you know, it's going to be treated as nausea and upset stomach. So the dog was treated appropriately. Most times they're given something like Serenia as an anti-nausea injection. They might be given some sub-Q fluids if they're getting a little dehydrated, not eating well. And a lot of times they're given Famotidine as an injection, which is just Pepsid. And that will calm everything down and make these dogs feel better. So you could use that for pancreatitis. You could use it for gastroenteritis. So either way, it kind of works. Um, you know, if you wanted to treat it more naturally, you could use things like a ginger tea or some slippery elm, um, a little bit of licorice, those sorts of things, sometimes a little bit of honey, but that will peppermint, peppermint tea. So those kinds of things would calm that down as well. So the interesting thing is the dog was taken back to the veterinarian a few weeks later and had its just normal lab work run to see what the kidneys were doing. And on that test, both the amylase and the PSL came out really high and the dog was absolutely not symptomatic. Now, why is it that we have a dog with symptoms with normal testing and a dog with no symptoms with abnormal testing. Here's the thing. The kidneys also, if you have a kidney problem, you will get an elevation in the amylase and the PSL. It's not a direct test of kidney function, but when the kidneys are not filtering correctly, the amylase will show up high. So many dogs with, and cats with chronic kidney failure or chronic kidney disease 
will have elevated amylase and it's just a normal state of affairs for them doesn't mean that they have pancreatitis or that they're you know dealing with inflammation in that particular area so don't overtreat pancreatitis if you get if you have a pet that has decreased kidney function and you get lab work back with an increased PSL or an increased amylase if they're not symptomatic don't go crazy treating that because you're treating numbers on a piece of paper what we want to do is treat what the animal looks like so for instance scout he's had some chronic pancreatitis problems which right now he's been really good for the last couple of months and i think that's because we are grinding all of our own food i posted a photo earlier this morning last night took us about two hours to grind and package (laughs) the schnauzer's going back to her mommy to grind and package 85 pounds of food for scout and millie and so we're using alpaca and rabbit which are fairly low fat but there's also no synthetics in the food so he's been doing so well since we've done that with him so um, but when i run his blood tests his amylase and psl run high all the time that's just become the new normal for him on paper but if he's clinically doing well i'm not going to go crazy with that i'm not going to keep him on pepsid because he has a test on a piece of paper that says it's high when he clinically has perfectly normal stool, no vomiting, no nausea, eats like a champ. Um, He wasn't eating for a few days really well. He was just really backing away from his food. And we've discovered two things about Scout. He really does not like mushroom powder. So we use a concentrated um, shiitake mushroom powder uh, because we can get a lot more of the, 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 active substance that's a cancer prevention and helps drain damp from using the powder it's a lot more concentrated so we don't have to buy as many mushrooms but he just despises that powder we can grind mushrooms in the diet and we do that for him and he'll eat that no problem but the powder man we just we can't we were like why is scout not eating my gosh his pancreas must be acting up did blood test he looked great i'm like oh what did we add recently Oh yeah, that would be the mushroom powder. So we took that back out and he's eating like a champ. The other thing we've discovered about Scout, he likes his eggs over easy. (laughs) So uh, the the freeloaders, the chickens are laying eight eggs a day, sometimes seven, but usually eight eggs a day. So everybody's giving us eggs. And so our dogs are really lucky now. They get organic, free range, home raised, take them out of the nest, put them in the bowl. You can't get fresher than that unless we took it right from the chicken. (laughs) And they're so cheap, yeah, right, <laughs> for what we're investing in chicken feed and uh, chicken coop. Yeah, saving a ton of money. Oh, But the real thing is we're getting really fresh eggs. So the dogs are lucky they're getting an egg a day, every single one of them. And so for the most part, we, cra- we feed them raw, so we crack them and just mix the raw egg in. Scout likes his eggs a little bit cooked, so we have to cook his eggs for him. Oh, and he doesn't like the oils. So fish oil, we use the Iceland Pure um, pump fish oil. Everybody does great with it except Scout. He doesn't like fish. So I talk about picky kids. You know, this is our picky child. So uh, we can't put fish in his bowl when we give everybody sardines, not to Scout. So we grind our own sardines, whole sardines now. And I'll put a spoonful of that in everybody's food except for Scout. But I can get away with the allergy. Oh, my teeth. I can get away with the allergy three capsules. Um, he'll because I that's in a capsule so I can hide that in his food and then he'll eat that and he does fine with that so that's the picky child okay um all right so if you're getting you know lab results back and you've got a high amylase and the kidney function is not so good don't get freaked out you know you can do more specific testing for the pancreas if you need to antec has that new psl i find a lot of animals run i think normal is less than 100 i find a lot of animals run in the 200s and that's just the normal for them um their lab work looks great and the interesting thing this dog that i was talking about originally they did an ultrasound the pancreas was beautiful So if we have a beautiful pancreas on ultrasound and when the dog is symptomatic, the pancreatic enzymes are normal. When the dog's not symptomatic, the amylase is a little elevated. Dog doesn't have an active pancreatitis. So she was all freaked out, you know, about she has to keep fats out of the diet. Pancreatitis is caused by a lot more than just high fat in the diet. Yes, excessive fat can set off some dogs, but 
inflammation in general and a lot of medications will cause pancreatitis. So if your pet has a bout of pancreatitis, once you get through it, you don't have to be crazy about keeping them at a 3% fat or a 4% fat. I did that with Scout for a little while. And what we found after four to six weeks, his coat just became awful and his arthritis was worse. They need some of those fats. They need in order to maintain weight, in order to have healthy nerve function, they need to have a certain amount of fats in their diet. So you can't restrict it to the point where you're going to get um, deficits. Okay, honey, I got to get to work. It's Monday. Crazy busy. Oh, and George and Shana are going to work with me today. Shana's going to get a chest x-ray. She's so much better since we started her on the cardiac meds, but I want to see what her heart size looks like. And uh, Georgie is going to get his teeth cleaned today. He doesn't know it yet. Don't tell him. Beth, they might be high on the diabetic dogs. Oh, it's Thursday. God, I keep saying it's Monday. Oh, it's Thursday. Sorry. <laughs> I still have to go to work. <laughs> I work from home on Tuesday and Wednesday, so it seemed like a weekend to me. <laughs> I don't know. It's another work day. <laughs> They're all the same. <laughs> I'm just trying to put a ex few extra days in the week. I need them. <laughs> <laughs> 